All right, these are gonna be your notes on the structures um, and the top muscles we're going to talk about in the muscle system. Remember, you can pause this at any point in time, fast forward, uh, do as you please to get this information. This would be a good one to just fast forward to the end of each one um, so that you can get the content. Frontalis, that's what uh, allows you to lift your eyebrows and kind of like furrow your forehead. Uh, orbicularis oculi is the circular muscle that goes around your eye. It's what allows you to like blink and shut your eye really strongly. Zygomaticus helps with chewing. Masseter also helps with chewing. Orbicularis oris um, is basically the muscle underneath your lips, so it's what allows you to manipulate your mouth and open and close in certain ways. Um, flexor carpi group allow you to flex your fingers, which means bring them closer to your palm. Sternocleidomastoid is what allows you to turn your head side to side. Trapezius is what like shrugs your arms up and down, pulls your shoulder closer to your head. Deltoid is what allows you to lift your arm laterally to the side. It wraps around front and back. So we'll see deltoid again. Latissimus dorsi is what pulls your arm back down. So it works the opposite of the deltoid. Pectoralis major is your pec muscle. It is what allows you to do sort of a inward motion of your arm. If it is extended out in front of you, it's what pulls it in a little tighter. Biceps brachii, they are a flexor for your arm. It's what brings your forearm up to your upper arm. So radius and ulna get pulled closer to humerus. External oblique allows you to rotate um, your torso. Rectus abdominis, those are what stabilize your spine. Those are your ab muscles. Iliopsoas are your hip flexors. It's what brings your femur closer to your stomach when you lift your leg to walk or run. Um, adductor longus helps you rotate your leg muscle, I mean your entire leg. Um, sartorius also works with rotation. Your sartorius is your longest muscle in your body. Uh, adductor longus is basically your groin muscle is the way you could think about that. So it is also an adductor which pulls it in toward your body. The opposite of an adductor is an abductor. Abductors pull things away from your body. Um, sartorius, longest muscle in the body. Oops. And then quadriceps femoris group, those are the four muscles that make up your front thigh. They are extenders, so they will, um, if your leg is bent at a 90 degree position, they will straighten your leg out. So it basically moves your lower leg away from your upper leg. Um, quadriceps femoris and adductor longus you've already got. Peroneus longus is your outermost muscle of your calf muscle. It allows for abduction of your ankle. So it pulls your ankle out and away. Tibialis anterior is a dorsiflexor, so it pulls your toes closer to your lower leg. An extensor digitorum longus, that is an extensor, so it helps you um, point your toes. Then your gastrocnemius is your inner calf muscle. When you flex your calf muscle, if you feel uh, on the internal portion of your leg, that is your gastroc that you are feeling. Backside. You've got extensor digitorum, that's what extends your fingers to straighten them out. Extensor carpi, that extends your wrist and hand so that it can be pulled back. Occupitalis, occipitalis, excuse me. Occipitalis is um, the muscle in the back of your head when you smile and you feel that contracting back there, that is your occipitalis. Sternocleido, sternocleidomastoid, you've seen again. It inserts in the back here to help you rotate your head. It originates down below. Your trapezius, it is shaped like a trapezoid muscle. It is what helps you pull your shoulders up toward your head. Deltoid, you've seen again, helps you extend your arm. Your deltoid is an abductor, it helps you move your arm away from your body. Triceps brachii are extenders, so they work against your biceps in order to extend your arm rather than contract your arm. 
And the last one is latissimus dorsi. I know that's covered up by the watermark, so I will spell it above. Latissimus dorsi. There you are, now you can see it. All right, next up as we move further down, we have your external oblique. Again, helps rotating your torso or trunk. Gluteus medius, your glute med is an abductor, so it helps you move your leg away from your body, sort of out on a single plane. Your gluteus maximus helps you with uh, extension of your hips. It is really kind of a part of your core actually as well, so it helps with spinal stability too. Flexor digitorum you've seen before, flexes your fingers so they move into your palm. Hamstring group, that is a flexor, so it is pulling your lower leg closer to your upper leg, helps with stride and running and things like that. And sartorius again, there it's attaching in the back so that it helps you with um, leg rotation when you move your leg in and out. Uh, hamstring group and sartorius you've seen before. Last one is gastrocnemius. If you've ever seen someone bicycling and they're wearing like um, shorter shorts or you can see their leg, oftentimes the muscle you see most clearly is the gastrocnemius. Uh, Achilles tendon attaches your gastroc to the heel of your foot uh, so that it can do work. And then your peroneus longus is an abductor, so it helps you rotate your foot away from your body, um, but keeps it in the same plane. All right, here I'm just gonna leave these open. What you need to know from this information, all of these terms, I just wanted to expose you to. What you really need to know is that there is a hierarchy of muscle size and um, tinsel strength, so to speak. So your muscle, this can be any muscle in your body, is made up of a group of fascicles. So here's a fascicle, here's a fascicle, here's a fascicle. These like nodules all in here are all fascicles. Here is an extended out fascicle. Every fascicle has its own motor neuron and has its own blood supply. So it doesn't just have its own blood vessel, it has its own artery and vein. Here is like a complete blown up version of a fascicle. Inside each fascicle, there are many muscle fibers all joined together. A muscle fiber is the same thing as a muscle cell. In the next slide, we're gonna look at what a muscle cell looks like. So here we go. Gonna move through all of these. This epimesium, paramecium, endomesium, those are all connective tissues. So here we have below. Remember that every muscle up here was made of a bunch of fascicles. Every fascicle is made of a lot of muscle cells all joined together. Every muscle cell is made of a group of myofibrils. Myofibrils are made of two things, thick filaments, which is myosin, and thin filaments, which are actin. So here is one muscle fiber. Each muscle fiber is made of many myofibrils. All muscle cells have a nucleus. They have a sarcolemma and a sarcoplasmic reticulum. And each muscle cell is broken up. See this um, line that goes here and here? Each muscle cell is broken up into many of these little segments. That little segment is called a sarcomere. So each of those are called sarcomeres. Sarcomeres become important when we talk about muscle contraction, which we're going to move to right now. Okay, so in the first step of muscle contraction, myosin gains an ATP, and myosin is normally sitting in this resting position. When it gains an ATP, it cocks it back, and it is ready to grab hold of an actin binding site. So it is in this cocked back position. Stage two, it actually grabs hold of that actin binding site and forms what's called a cross bridge. So this myos, I mean this um, myosin filament is connected to this actin filament via this cross bridge. Okay, step three is called a power stroke, where the myosin, myosin head 
rotates inward and makes this actin filament contract, so shorten in a sense. This is called the power stroke. The last step, another ATP binds, which allows the myosin head to release the actin filament and be prepared to start all over again with an ATP initiation that will make it cock back, grab hold of an actin filament, pull the actin filament so that it constricts, and then release again to start the process over again. All right, call me, I mean, come in if you have any questions. Sorry, don't call me. <laughs> Email me or come in if you have any questions.